uh, we're here at the Blue Nova test facility to test a very exciting day for us. We're testing a super capacitor based uh, battery for solar applications. Um, the idea is just to verify a couple of key parameters uh, like the round trip efficiency uh, stated as 99.1%. That is a very exciting number at 1C. That means we can charge this battery at 125 amps until it's full and discharge it and only use 0.9% of the total energy in and out. That has got major implications for the sizing of the solar system as well as the sizing of the battery during discharge. Okay, um, at the moment we're just trying to get the battery to 100% state of charge. We've set the absorb voltage at 53.8. It seems to be regulating around that point. However, we observe the current to be in the region of 2.4 amps. Um, energy remains constant. That is a bit concerning. Uh, that seems to be in the region of about 125 watts continuous power drawn by the system. That is the input to the switch mode power supplies, which we is running off the battery voltage, about close to 380 milliamps off the 53 volt line. Just to confirm that the input of the switch mode power supplies is the battery voltage of 53.7. Yeah, so a really interesting observation is that the, the current now, almost three, four minutes later, is now 2.3 amps. I'm really measuring 4 amps, 4.2. Uh, we'll check that now. So, and then it goes down all the way to about 1.2 amps and cycles back and it's back at 2 amps now. So the power consumption in standby when float is really not constant. Okay, so we're going to now uh, go from a float slash absorb situation which we had previously where we see the, the, the current oscillating uh, previously from about 2 amps all the way down to about 0.8 and you have a similar characteristic it seems that there's a f oscillation frequency behind it and then there's the peak sort of reducing down to what seems to be at the end of the day about 500 milliamps okay. so the next test is then to switch on a 75 amp load which is the 1c load and there we go and we'll just have a look at the voltage coming down from 53.8 current is going up slowly all the way to 70 one amps roughly voltage down 52.0 here we see the initial voltage drop at the beginning of the test as you can see we're dropping from 50 3.8 volts uh, down to just over 51 volts which is about a 2.3 volt drop in a very short period uh, of about one minute so this is certainly not linear capacitor discharge behavior here we have our calibrated energy meter indicating the current to be 74.8 roughly 75 amps voltage at 51.14 and here we see the current indicating only 71 amps so there is certainly an offset there of about four three and a half to four amps and a third source indicating that the current is 75 amps so clearly a small error in the region of about eight percent on the internal meter okay there's there's definitely a big concern regarding the energy calculation uh, also the voltage and the current measurements seeing 46.27 and 71.8 amps and if we then go over to a calibrated meter and meter here current is actually 76 amps only 72 there and the voltage so here's the calibrated meter showing the same 76 amps and 46.1 volts at the terminals of the battery and measuring <laughs> 46.2 volts on the terminal of the battery. Yeah, 46.2 volts. And seeing 46, the same 46.2 volts here, but the current showing significantly less. But the energy calculation is the one that concerns me. Okay, just taking a closer look inside, we see a series of what seems to be stacked Arduino processors with Ethernet shields on top of them. 
we see the the battery packaged in what appears to be a cardboard enclosure with duct tape and then we have some really interesting pieces of masking tape the main breaker hanging in the air here isolation by means of sort of glue this is the negative terminal isolated with a glue same with the positive terminal on that side a similar type of glue but we also see the wooden blocks here that's keeping the battery in place served a significant uh, stay at about 45 volts for a long time maybe five, five minutes and now we see a sudden decrease in the voltage coming down um, and I think the trip level is set at 44 so she's coming down very fast now okay now we see a radical acceleration of the voltage the same current and it's tripping uh, 44.1 we see a bounce back yeah it's bouncing back significantly 45.2 yeah, exhibiting a big bounce back characteristic uh, I would expect this to stay at 44 uh, that 1.7 volts already bounced back 1.8 yeah, that is not what we were expecting to see. The current is zero now. So any voltage changes now is due to internal voltage rise of the battery itself. Okay. Battery just reconnected with a big bang. Um, just check the voltage there for me on the battery. 44.2 expected to open at any moment now it's opening up okay and now this contactor without any pre-charge is going to close into the quattro's capacitor bank which is now obviously discharged okay so we've um, good we've come to the end of the test on the efficiency we can see that the energy that we have put back in is 3.8 kilowatt hours the current is tapered down Back to that oscillatory 2 amps down to 0.6 amps scenario so the battery is full I'm really concerned about the fact that we have standby power of more than 100 watts so that doesn't bode well for operational efficiency because 100 watts after 10 hours is a kilowatt hour and after 20 hours it's 2 kilowatt hours okay. Okay folks, uh, we've basically concluded the efficiency test. We started off a little bit uh, over an hour ago. Um, we had the battery charged at 53.8 volts, 100% state of charge. We then discharged that at a roughly 57 amps all the way down to the tripped at 44 volts. We recorded a total energy delivered of 3.54 kilowatt hours. We then uh, recharged the battery to uh, uh, 53.8 volts until the tail current settled so that we can uh, confirm that it was full and we uh, put in a total of 3.8 kilowatt hours back into the battery and if you subtract those two the losses were in the region of 260 watt hours which gives us a total turnaround efficiency of 93 percent which is a seven percent loss so this specific battery claiming 99.1% total turnaround efficiency, I thought it was a bit of a tall order, especially if you just look at the standby power for the electronics. Turns out to be that turnaround efficiency is more likely to be about 93%. So not completely disappointed, but certainly, uh, yeah, it is not 99.1% efficient. Looking at the battery voltage during the complete discharge cycle at 75 amps, which is the 1C discharge cycle, and we see the, the rapid discharge initially from 53.6 volts of down to about 51 volts. And then going down in a linear, almost linear fashion uh, until we see the first bounce back when, where we discontinue the current. That bounce back is uh, almost 1.4 volts. And then further on down, down uh, during the test, we also interrupted the current again for about a minute or two. And you again see the initial steep bounce back, which is related to the resistive
component of the circuit and then you also see a capacitive um, recovery characteristic very similar to what we see in lithium-ion batteries and then towards the end again the the rapid decay uh, of the voltage down to 43.8 where the battery tripped looking at the battery discharge voltage over time starting off at uh, 53 volts and going down to 44 in a non-linear manner certainly not like a capacitor discharging um, we've been looking around uh, comparing that to other discharge curves and what we found is the, the the dark thick purple line discharging from about 2.7 volts down to 2.2 volts is the discharge characteristics of a lithium titanate oxide battery